Are you stuck at home feeling lonely and with not much to do? Perhaps you just binged the Queen's Gambit and you're looking to dip your feet into the waters of the chess subculture. Are you low-key training to become the next Magnus Carlsen, but you're just not sure how to achieve your first rating? Are you tired of wondering whether there's a human or a genius Terminator chess robot at the other end of your device? Are you familiar with the elephant trap? If you answered yes to any of these questions, an over-the-board chess tournament may be right for you. Players assume and are responsible for all risks associated with attending an over-the-board chess tournament during a global pandemic, and chess lifestyle is not liable for any damages incurred or resulting therefrom. Got my uh, blue light resistant uh, glasses so I can stare at a, a screen with chess pieces longer. Got my uh, mango tea by Arizona. Uh, not a sponsor, just pure deliciousness. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Dylan from Chess Lifestyle, and today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, chess tournaments in the United States. A couple weeks ago, Michael gave his version of uh, the ECF and how to get involved in the UK, but today I'm gonna to be doing the same for the US. So I'm gonna be trying to make a case for you to get involved in the tournament scene and why it might be worth it if you are a casual player considering going competitive. But first I wanna update everyone on what I've been doing chess-wise. So one of the big things that I just finished is a KaroCon bootcamp on modern chess. And um, I really like modern chess. They have a lot of uh, very instructive boot camps with several hours of very high quality instruction from uh, several grandmasters who are very well uh, booked up. I feel like I learned a lot about the various structures that can arise out of the KaroCon and the plans associated with them. Another thing I've been working on is this uh, Playing 1E4, E5, The Classical Repertoire by Nikolaos Natrilis. Wrote this book on a full repertoire for E5 um, and anything that can come about after you play 1E4, E5. And I'm trying to uh, play half Karo, half E5 in response to E4. So, um, you know, I'm doing everything I can to expand my repertoire in a way that will make me harder to prep for and just allow me some flexibility. So I'm really enjoying that book, and that's sort of what I'm doing here. I'm going through the book and inputting the lines concretely into my uh, opening database. And also, I'm still training with Michael. Um, the things that we do to train together varies um, based on whatever we feel like doing, but these days we've been um, doing some chess mood stuff. I don't know if you've heard of chess mood, but it's a, a great, it's a relatively new online platform um, with a lot of cool... Uh, instructive courses and we're going through um, their 100 games you must know I think it's called and uh, yeah it's been very instructive as well we've also been looking at De La Villa's 100, ga 100 and games you must know and uh, going through some of those so I've got a pretty well balanced diet of, of chess stuff going on right now plus I'm still doing long um, training games so that's it for my update um, let's get into uh, what it takes to join the tournament scene in the United States. So the first distinction I want to make between the US and the UK chess scenes is that the US has USCF and the UK has ECF, um, as Michael described in his video. And the USCF uh, stands for the United States Chess Federation. Um, it's a pretty well-run uh, organization. And the USCF has their own rating system, but they also have their own titles, which is pretty cool. They have uh, USCF Expert at 2000 rating and uh, USCF 2000 and they have National Master, I think at 2200 USCF. You can sign up for um, different levels of membership, similar to the, the ECF. Um, I think the regular adult membership is $40, and it's cheaper for, for juniors, of course, and there are lots of different, um, lots of different categories based on age. And you can sign up for one year or two years. I think for uh, multiple years, you get a slight discount. The next thing I wanna talk about is where you can play. The main distinction I wanna make is between clubs on the one hand and uh, tournaments on the other. And sometimes clubs can run tournaments, they can run their own tournaments, but club tournaments are sort of filler events in my eyes um, that sort of pepper the calendar, the chess calendar uh, in between the big opens and the championships, which are your main staple chess events that everyone uh, marks down on their calendar and plans and trains for. Um, so the, the club tournaments are usually just weekend, um, they're not congresses like the ECF, um, they're usually very casual, um, small prize fund events. Usually it's not even like longer than 60 minutes per game, it's usually like 30 minutes. It's the, it's the minimum time control that will count towards your long rating. Another thing about clubs is that they're very spread out, which is something I mentioned in the UK versus US chess video that I uh, made a, a few months ago. But uh, yeah, they're very spread out. You should be able to find one in your local area if you, if you don't live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's a good way to go meet like-minded 
people and maybe find a training partner. One good way to sort of judge the quality of, um, of a club is the, the caliber of tournaments that they organize. For example, the Charlotte Chess Club, uh, St. Louis Chess Club, they run norm events. And if a club runs a norm event, um, this attracts uh, players from sometimes all over the world. And this is a very good indicator that they have the resources uh, necessary to accommodate um, a very welcoming and uh, well-run club. But that doesn't mean if you don't live in an area with a club that runs norm events, then you shouldn't go. Um, I think you're, you're just lucky if you happen to live in an area where there is one. Next thing I wanna talk about is the money. And this is a big factor for a lot of people, myself included, who um, don't have an unlimited supply of it. And when I first entered the chess world as a 19 year old, I quickly realized that uh, it can be pretty expensive. There are a lot of fees to pay. The USCF has their own fees, like I mentioned. Um, and yeah, you can't play in rated uh, events if you're not a USCF member on some level. Of course, there are tournament entry fees uh, charged by the organizers, but also sometimes there's a third fee um, that organizers require if they run their own uh, chess club and it's uh, a membership to that club. Sometimes you have to be a member of that club in order to play in the tournaments. And so that's sort of a hidden uh, tournament entry fee sometimes. And this can be unfortunate, especially if you're planning just to travel um, maybe regionally to that tournament and you're not expecting to make full use of a club, a club membership. But okay, now I'm gonna talk about why all of these fees are a great investment and uh, what all exactly you get for your money. The first thing that's awesome about chess in the United States, um, I guess this is uh, based on your perspective, but you get a lot of road trip opportunities. And this could sound like I'm uh, trying to turn uh, bad news into good news, but since tournaments are so spread out all over the country, you get the opportunity to really see some cool places. And um, I really enjoy driving, I enjoy road trips, so this is um, actually a merit, a plus to me. I've taken lots of road trips with my chess buddies to some of these um, some of these big open chess tournaments and uh, championships. By the way, uh, in America, we like to call them championships because we're grandiose like that, go figure. One cool trip I took with some of my chess buddies in I think 2015 was to the Chicago Open, which uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, I did pretty well in that tournament, um, but it was funny, One of the during one of the rounds, um, my other two friends got done early, so I ended up letting them take my parents' car, which we took to Chicago, to the Navy Pier. Uh, maybe that wasn't the soundest decision um, by me. I was sort of sweating bullets during that game. Um, anyway, the Navy Pier is the big Chicago attraction that sits on Lake Michigan. And unfortunately, I didn't get to experience that with them. But yeah, I'd rather be at the chessboard anyway. And yeah, that entire trip was a lot of fun. Got to have some um, tasty Chicago deep dish pizza and see some other sites as well. And I've had lots of memorable experiences at these big open events like the World Open in Philadelphia. I have a friend who lives there who let me stay with them for several nights. And yeah, I got some good wins in that event as well. And that one I actually traveled to alone, which brings me to my next uh, merit of what you get for your money. You get, not only is it fun to take a road trip with friends and experience uh, together, but it's a great thing to do alone. It, it sort of for me, it scratches the same itch as an artist, uh, as being in the studio. It feels like something important that you're going to do and really focus on and better yourself during. I don't know, I'm an introvert. I really enjoy my alone time and going to chess tournaments alone to me is no less gratifying. The next thing you get for your money is the feeling of validation uh, that comes with being around a lot of people who enjoy the same thing, simple as that. I've been to a lot of huge tournaments in the United States and, and trust me, they put on huge, massive tournaments where they don't even provide, they're not able to provide their own sets um, because of the sheer volume of entries. And the experience of being in a crowd of people, especially one where you're able to create an environment to conducive to having everyone just be silent. Everyone is together, but silent. And this is sort of a magical, spiritual almost environment that I really find energizing. Uh, I don't find partying energizing in the same way because that's just uh, too much noise, too much uh, commotion uh, for the type of person I am. Chess for me provides the type of socialization that I need to feel energized. And that's something that I get, that I feel like I'm getting for my money because let's face it, these days you don't get a lot of opportunities to sit and uh, have a dedicated uh, time and space to simply uh, be quiet and concentrate. Um, deeply on something. And that's the other thing you get. You get a dedicated time and space to concentrate. It's very similar to um, what I always like to say that I get for my money in art school, which is um, time and space. And, and people 
like to downplay that, but in the modern world as an adult, you really don't get the same opportunities to um, to really focus and, and get in the zone. And um, brings me to the last thing that I think you get for your money is a learning opportunity. Whether you win or lose, if you review your games, which you always should, um, there's no way you will not come away a better player um, as a result of attending these tournaments. Because at tournaments, you're much more likely to take it very seriously and really apply yourself and everything that you know because there are stakes. And when you're sitting at home online, um, you don't have the same stakes, you don't have the same mental uh, capacity to, to really take it as seriously. And so as a result, the quality of your game um, during a tournament should be a little bit higher. And I think maximizing the quality of your play and then going back and reviewing that, that's gonna be how you improve the most. You don't only wanna improve a lesser version of yourself. You wanna improve your peak and really embody your peak uh, to the highest extent that you can. My conclusion is that although it can cost a lot of money, uh, for me, it's really worth it to, to save if you have to and, and really look at it as a great investment in yourself and on your game. And if you love the game, great. And if you don't yet, then I highly recommend you try it out anyway um, because you might just fall in love with it like I did. Quick story before the end of the video. Uh, my first chess tournament was the Mid-America Open in 2011. I think I was a freshman in college and I took a trip to my first sort of large scale open. I'd only played two local tournaments before the Mid-America Open and this would be my third tournament ever. And uh, this was in St. Louis. I live in Kansas City, so it's a four hour road trip I took with a buddy. And I ended up actually tying for first in the under 1300 section. And I didn't have a rating yet, so this was um, super exciting to me. And I ended up sharing the $800 first prize um, with another little kid um, who I drew in the last round. So yeah, not a bad payday to come home with during uh, spring break. So that's my story about how I uh, fell in love with chess. Um, what I feel like you get for your money in chess, and I hope you have a similar experience. I know we're not able to enjoy over the board tournaments these days, but uh, hopefully soon they'll they'll come back and um, chess mo won't fully move online like some people are, are projecting. A lot of why I love the game so much is um, the factors that come with playing over the board. So in the comments, let me know about your best experience in an over the board tournament. And uh, that's it for me for this video. I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Bye.